Hi, my name is uh, Will Pinchek. I'm an education services engineer with Juniper Networks. And uh, this learning bite is to uh, discuss the difference between uh, configuring a plain text password and an, and an encrypted password when configuring users uh, on the Junos operating system. Okay. This is uh, typically, this is, this is uh, geared towards uh, uh, operators who are new to Junos. Uh, that uh, have have not configured the uh, users before. Um, so the idea of this learning byte is to help you make an informed decision when choosing a method of configuring a user's password. Um, yeah, there's generally the the two again the two methods we're going to talk about are plain text and encrypted password. If you make the wrong choice, and the wrong choice is generally when you use the encrypted password but you use it incorrectly um, this this may cause you to have to go through the uh, Junos operating system password recovery process and if that's the case that's going to require re a reboot on your device and uh, I'm I'm hoping to uh, that by watching this learning by it will prevent you having to go through that process and rebooting a, a device that's uh, in your in your network so let's look at uh, the password configuration options. So again, when you when you configure users uh, in, in the Junos operating system, you do it under the Edit System Login level of the hierarchy. It's there that you configure users. Here I have a user Will P, um, and I'm going to specify the authentication method. There are different methods here, but the two that we care about in this learning byte are either the encrypted password or the plain text password. Okay, and you can use either for for this particular user. Okay, uh, the plain text password uh, that requires the operator who's configuring at this moment to configure the plain text password that the user would enter at the uh, uh, at the moment he he logs into the box. So the operator who's typing all this con this configuration command in needs to know the actual password for the user. On the, for, if we use the encrypted password uh, method, it requires that the operator, the person configuring this statement, to use a pre-configured, or sorry, a pre-encrypted password at the end of this line. So if I say authentication encrypted password, I would be expected to enter a pre-encrypted uh, form of the user's password, of Will P's password. Okay. Um, and again, I've, I've never seen anybody hand type out an encrypted password. Um, it's generally a password that's been cut and pasted from, a, from another configuration. Now, where the problem lies is, is generally for new users who uh, are configuring a user for the first time. They see these two options and they say, oh, look at this. There's an encrypted password version and a plain text password. Now, um, uh, it looks to me like encrypted password seems like the more secure way to go, so why don't I just go with that instead of this plain text password, which sounds not so secure. Uh, turns out they're, uh, they're not so, neither one of them are that uh, insecure, um, the, but uh, we'll, and we'll talk about the differences here. So what I'll do is I'm going to go through some hands-on uh, configuration examples here. And, uh, and we'll kind of walk through the difference between the two. Uh, uh, just so you know, all user passwords are going to be lab123 for this experiment that we're about to go through. Okay, So no matter what user I configure, I'm, the user is going to have the same password of lab123, for all, same as all the other users on the box. So if we'll start out, we're going to view an existing configuration that already has some users configured. Okay, and you're going to notice that they already have encrypted passwords configured. Okay, uh, you're, then we'll add a new user to a different router. So a router that doesn't have any users configured, we'll add a new user, and we're going to use the plain text password, password method, and we'll verify that it will. You're going to notice that it's going to get converted automatically to an encrypted password, and then we'll verify through the login process that the user can log in using his plain text password. Then we'll add a second user 
to the configuration using the encrypted password method. And we'll go through a couple iterations of it just to show you um, both the benefits and the problems that arise when, when you use the encrypted password method. Okay. So first, you should see here that I've got a uh, router 1 and router 2. Okay. Router 1 is already configured with a couple users. Okay. The one user called lab and one user called lab 1. You should notice that they both already have, uh, they, they will, they have a class called super user, which we won't get into here, but they also have an authentication method. And this one's, uh, this uses the encrypted password mechanism, authentication encrypted password. So here, if I look at router two and I do a show here, I've got nothing configured under edit system login. So I want to add some new users. I want to add these same two users, lab one, or sorry, lab and lab one. So let's do that. I'm going to do. I'm going to add lab one or lab. I'm going to use. I'm going to add user lab using the uh, plain text password method. Method. So I'll say set user lab. That's the name of the uh, user. Give them a class of super user, and then the authentication method is going to be the plain text password method. Now. If, I, if I'm going to use this method to configure this user, I need to know the user lab's password, which that user may or may not want to give me. So um, in this case, we'll say that that user actually gave me the password to enter. So I'll hit enter. And that user's password is lab123. And I'll enter lab123 as a, a retype it. And if I say show now, Look at this. We see that we have a user lab. He's class super user, and is auth he's got a, he's authenticated using this encrypted password. But we entered it as a plain text password. So what you should notice is that even though I use plain text password, that when it goes in uh, into the configuration, it goes in as an encrypted version of that password. Okay. So we never store on the Junos operating system any of the uh, non-encrypted forms of the password. So you should feel good about using plain text password because we're not going to store it in plain text. We store it in the encrypted version. Uh, and uh, the only thing is you need to know at the time you configure this user what that user's plain text password is. Okay. So now let me add a second user. This time I'm going to add lab1. I'm going to add lab1 to router2. Okay. And this time I'm going to use the encrypted password method. Okay. Uh, so first off, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and add it. So here we go. So set uh, user lab one. Give him a class of super user. And this time we're going to say the authentication method is the encrypted password. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to give me an error because really it expects me to to type in or paste in the encrypted password string, which we have here. So we know Lab1's on another router, his password is this encrypted password. So what I can do is I can copy this encrypted password, including the quotes, control, insert. So there we go. I'm gonna, I'm, and now I'm going to paste it in to the end of this line. And if I issue the show command, here we have it. I now have Lab. Um, with an encrypted password, even though I configured it with plain text, and here's lab one with the encrypted password, and I pasted it in as an encrypted password. Okay. Now, if I commit those, I'm going to commit and quit. Okay. I'm going to log out of this router, and I'm going to verify that I can get in with using both of those names. Okay. I'm going to log in as lab. Uh, here, I'll come in as lab. Sorry, lab. Okay. A, which we entered as a plain text password, so I'm going to enter lab123. I get in no problem. So lab, user lab is able to get in. Now let's make sure lab1 can get in. Exit. So now I'll log in with lab1. Enter. Lab123 is the password. And sure enough, so both methods work. Okay. When you use the plain text me uh, password method, you need to know the user's actual plain text password which he may or may not want to give you. If he doesn't want to give you, well, then you can go to another router and just copy it, the encrypted version in, 
but you enter it as an encrypted password instead of a plain text password. So that's, that is the normal usage of those two configuration methods. Now, problems happen. If I go in and configure, edit system login, okay, I'm going to show it. Now I've got these two users. Now let's say a, a, a new operator shows up. It's going to configure a new user, and he's very new to Junos. So he goes in. I'm going to configure lab2. So set user lab2 class. We'll give him a super user. Say authentication method. And here we look, and we see the two different methods, encrypted password or plain text password. And again, I'm a new guy to Jun Juno, so maybe I'll use encrypted password, because that sounds like it's more secure. So I'll hit encrypted password. We know I'll get an error that way. So it, what do I, I hit question mark. Question mark says, oh, enter the encrypted password string. So uh, for lab2, I want the password to be lab123. And there is a mistake, right? Because you know we're expecting this a user to be able to, we're expecting the lab two user to enter this password of lab one two three when he logs in, but that's not going to work here. If I say show, the encrypted password looks like this. Okay, it's not one of these standard looking encrypted passwords that are in quotes that end that begin in the dollar sign one. Um, Right, so this this I can tell you is not going to work, and Lab Two is going to be locked out of this box, but it will commit, right? Because it believes the CLI believes well that you must have meant to do that, so you're now going to hit commit and quit. And I'm going to try and log in as this Lab Two user. Okay, so I'm going to log out of Lab Two or, or of, as Lab One. I'm going to lab back log back in as Lab Two. Log back in as lab2. Now I'm going to try my lab123 password, and it won't work. Lab123, enter, and it's not going to work. So here's how someone who doesn't know the difference between plain text and encrypted password has just locked themselves or someone out of the box. So for lab2 to be able to get into this box, um, Basically, there's really no way to get in through this uh, through this authentication method here. So he needs to know the root password. He doesn't know the root password. Uh, he's he's in trouble. Um, and another option uh, to to recover your password is go through the password recovery process, um, which we don't cover in this learning bite. Uh, but uh, it would require you to reboot your router. And during the reboot process, you have to basically interrupt the reboot process and um, you know go through a whole process to to um, to recover your password. So Lab Two would be locked out. Now, in this case, you know I know root pass. I know the root password. I also know the the passwords for both Lab and Lab One that we configured earlier. So I'll log in as Lab, and I know that password is Lab One Two Three. So I'm able to get in no problem. So I would immediately need to go in to the edit system login area and fix this mistake that I had made. So I'd want to say set uh, user lab to authentication. In this case, I want to do plain text password uh, and enter it as lab123, lab123. And sure enough, now this looks a lot better where there's an actual encrypted good encrypted password there. Okay? And that's it. So um, many, many times have I seen somebody lock them out of, themselves out of the box by using encrypted password incorrectly. So uh, just, you know, now, now you know. Now you know how to use plain text password. You know how to use encrypted password. You know, you, 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 you can now see that there's a benefit to encrypted password. See, because I was able, I can configure other users without having them tell me their password. I can just go on to another box and grab the encrypted version and use the encrypted password method of, uh, of uh, configuration to configure their password. So there are benefits to both methods. Okay. So in conclusion, you know, normally you're going to use that plain text password method. It's the easiest method of, of configuring uh, a password local on the box. You can also use that encrypted password method, 
mechanism, but and generally you're going to use the cut and paste mechanism uh, to to uh, to configure those password passwords. Um, if you need more information on configuring and recovering passwords, I, I recommend attending our uh, Juniper's uh, introduction to the Junos OS course, um, which covers covers more on on uh, those items. And that's that's it for me. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was useful to you. And uh, maybe I'll talk to you on another learning bike. Thanks. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.